Hi, good day to all. This is Kelvin here. Welcome to this week's latest edition of our weekly technical outlook on the major stock indices, where I'll be covering the latest trend bias and key levels to watch for this week uh, on the SPX 500, the NASDAQ 100, the Hong Kong 50, the Japan 225, and the German 40 stock indices for the week of 4th of July to 8th of July 2022. So before we start, let's take a look at the disclaimer slides first. All right, so now let have, let's have a quick uh, we call it run through on this weekly performance uh, last week on the major stock indices uh, and versus its prior weeks. So what we could see is that last week in the major stock indices, all the way the four of them, uh, the SPX 500, the tech heavyweight NASDAQ 100, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, as well as the uh, small cap Russell 2000, all four of them actually ended in the red. So kind of a pullback with the worst performing will be the NASDAQ 100 down negative 4.3%. As you could see, uh, it's last week performance versus its prior weekly performance and as well as its momentum trend has starts to ease off a fair bit after a kind of a improving or accelerating to the upside or I would say bottoming uh, three to four weeks ago. And what's surprising is not surprising will be the Hansing and the Hansing Tech Index. Uh, last week, they managed to kind of hold the fort uh, with a uh, modest gain at negative, uh, positive 0.65% and uh, the Hansing Tech Index at 0.53%. But bearing in mind that uh, last week, they were at, they actually had a shortened week uh, because of the 1st of July uh, Hong Kong anniversary handover. Uh, a dismal performance also on the Nikkei 225, uh, which is actually down negative 2.10%. And the German uh, DAX index also uh, fed uh, relatively um, uh, muted as well at negative 2.33%. But if you compare it to the German the, the DAX uh, last week performance against its prior four weeks average, it actually started to improve uh, slightly uh, where we start to see a kind of a, a ease off in this uh, downside momentum last week versus its prior four week average. So now, before we jump into the technical picture very quickly of the individual uh, indices, the 11 sectors performance on the S&P 500 last week. So uh, uh, not too, I would say that not too promising as per se. Uh, we could start to see uh, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, four of 11 are in the green and majority of the bulk of them are in the defensive sector. Utilities are performed, which is a defensive sector. Energy uh, due to a more of a less uh, kind of a uh, resilient oil price is kind of trading sideways, uh, plus 1.29%. And healthcare and consumer stables, uh, we have much explanation. They too belongs to the consumer def uh, defensive sector as well, which is uh, gaining 0.38% last week. And consumer stables uh, uh, gaining slightly a modest gain of 0.28%. And the one that is frank the worst last week was actually uh, related to uh, the growth uh, proxy, which is more related to uh, sensitive to growth proxy, which is the information technology, uh, communication services, and consumer discretionary, both all of them down an average of 4.5% uh, to negative 4.7%. All right, so now let's take a look at the technical chart uh, from there. So let's start with the SPX 500 first. Okay, so for, for sure, the SPX 500 over here, so this was last week uh, pullback, what we could see over here. So bear in mind over here is that uh, two weeks ago, we did say that uh, we have a view that this uh, this this uh, six month or five months plus of downtrend, which is of course is a major downtrend, starting from the high, the all-time high of 5th of Jan 2020, we more or less has come to a tipping point or an inflection point above 35.80. <coughs> Pardon me. That means, i.e., we are now starting in the process of a potential multi-month, at least one to three months of corrective rebound, potentially taken out towards four two one seven four three ten to actually see this uh, wave B, uh, wave B. Then thereafter, we may start to see another leg of a major downtrend to take us much lower below thirty five eighty. So at this point in time, over here is that uh, last week is considered more like a pullback formation pullback and what's interesting over here last friday it ended with a positive uh, uh positive price action 
and what we could see over here is that if we go to the four hour chart which is the strategy chart i share with you all so on the four hour chart the pullback actually stopped at this uh, lower boundary of this short-term ascending channel and as well as if we were to draw a feeble retracement from here taking the low of 17 of june all the way up to the high of 28 of june it actually stopped close to the 61.8 percent before it staged a rebound on last friday so in terms of a fractal uh, analysis approach, an alert wave approach, what we could see over here is that last week pullback from 28th of June to last Thursday low, it's uh, considered as a consolidation or a, a, a pullback within this uh, corrective rebound phase that is still uh, ongoing. That means what we could say that um, the, this rebound phase are, is still pretty much intact. Uh, rather than what we could see is the start of a impulsive down move that could potentially take us down much lower towards 35.80. So I will use last uh, close to last Thursday swing low as my pivotal support for this week, uh, 37.30. Uh, so 37.30 pivotal support for this week, looking for a potential, uh, we call it uh, recovery, or this corrective rebound phase uh, to remain intact heading towards 39.45 a break above 39.45 should re reinforce a further potential up move of this multi-month corrective rebound phase towards the next uh, resistance at uh, 40.75 okay so i don't know why this line is missing so let me draw for you over here Okay, 47.5, maximum 42.04, which is the swing high area of 6th of June and uh, 8th of June. And uh, 40.75 was also confluence with this descending channel uh, taken resistance taken from the high of 30th of March. Okay, now moving on next will be the NASDAQ 100. So if you look at the NASDAQ 100 over here, yeah, even though last week it uh, kind of underperformed, it's the worst performer among the major stock US indices. Uh, what you could see is that last week uh, candle uh, last on last Friday also ended pretty positive as well. But what's interesting over here is that uh, the the current price action seems to be uh, evolving within a bullish descending wedge configuration, also giving us a uh, further evidence that this uh, mid first leg, like a first or I'll say I would say this first major downtrend phase from its all time high of twenty second of November twenty twenty one. Is also coming to a potential tail end holding above this 10,960, 10,675 uh, major support level that we highlighted three weeks ago. And what we could see over here is that since the, the low of 16th of June uh, is actually now evolving potentially into a also a multi week uh, or multi month uh, corrective rebound phase uh, to, to, to complete that wave B at 12,960, 13,500 before the start of another second major downtrend phase uh, to, to actually kickstart to take us much lower towards 10,675. But thereafter, right now, you all know, as we all know, that price action don't go all the way vertical down. There will be uh, a break in this, uh, we call it a longer term, a very cyclical uh, downside of uh, trend phase where now it's actually doing this kind of potential retrace, retracement or a corrective rebound space to retrace the certain portion of the losses that has been incurred since this uh, first downtrend phase that took shape from its all-time high in November 2021 to the low of uh, 15th of June, 15th of June 2022. So as you can see on the strategy chart, if you go to the strategy chart as well, uh, on the four hour chart, latest price action on last Friday is, is actually stored at this short term ascending channel that has been taking, sh uh, has started to take shape since the low of 16th of June 2022. And what's interesting over here is in terms of the FIBO uh, retracement, uh, last week a uh, pullback actually managed to store at the 60 or 76.4 percent uh, FIBO retracement. All right. So, uh, if you look into this uh, Elliott Wave perspective, this uh, push pullback 
from last uh, Monday all the way to Thursday low, uh, it seems to be uh, reaching a tipping point already. That means based on the FIBO 76.4% FIBO retracement. And uh, where does it stop? It actually stop at this uh, uh, this this ascending channel support level, short-term ascending channel support. And uh, if you take into account of the RS the RSI, so if you could see the RSI also start to shape a series of higher low as well. Okay, higher low, higher low, higher low. So what it means that uh, short-term upside momentum it seems to be uh, resuming back into this Nasdaq 100. So I'll be using 11,280 as my key medium-term pivotal support for this week, still keeping that bullish bias to look for another leg of corrective rebound. Okay, heading towards uh, 12,180. So above, above, a break above 12,180 potentially could take us a much higher towards 12,450. A maximum 12,770, which is the swing high area of 6th of June and 8th of June. But however, if we start to see a four hour close below 11,080, we may see a retest at this major support at 11,000 slash 10,960. Uh, a break below it could see a slightly drop further towards uh, 10,675. So, why is 10,675? We go to the daily chart. 10,675 is this a uh, swing low area of 18th of September. And 23rd of September 2022. All right. So now, uh, going if you look at the RSI as well, RSI has been shaping, uh, uh, uh holding above a ascending trend line support since uh hitting a a, a low, a kind of an extreme of a sole level on 25th of Jan 2022. All right. Okay. Now moving on, uh, to the Hong Kong uh 50 index. So always uh, the last week the Hong Kong 50 we actually turned neutral due to mixed element. So uh, right now, what we could see over here is uh, it seems to be forming a kind of a short-term ascending channel within a range-bound configuration. Uh, the short-term ascending channel that I draw is from the 12th of May 2020 low. All right. So what uh, what we could see over here is that price action uh, currently managed to actually stage a, a rebound uh, at this former minor swing high area of 21st of June 2022 turns into a pullback support. So uh, what I could do also very pretty much uh, coming also very close to this uh, short term ascending channel support as well. But uh, I do not want to tighten my pivotal support to so tight around at the 21,250 level, give a bit of breathing space. I will show you this, uh, uh, we call it a, a, a bigger picture. That means this uh, longer term ascending uh, range ascending triangle range support which is at 20,470. So this ascending channel uh, is ascending triangle, pardon me, ascending triangle, ascending triangle range support that's in place since 15th of March 2020 low. And right now, uh, this gray line over here, this ascending triangle range, ascending triangle range support. Uh, why? Because it's, it's from a similar high on 4th of April and similar high on, uh, okay, the 28th of June high uh, stopped right below the 4th of April high. So this is giving me a kind of a ascending triangle range configuration, which is the range support at 20,470. 20, so I don't want to tighten it too tight. Okay, so it's using 20,470 as my key medium term pivotal support. So uh, potentially it could drop much lower towards here. So uh, I, will, I will be bullish in any dips uh, holding above 20,470. Uh, to play a further push up towards 22,640. A break above it could take us much higher towards the next resistance zone at 23,350 slash 23,700, which is uh, this this area over here. This uh, this uh, former, uh, we call it a, a range, former support level turns into a pullback resistance and also a feeble extension of one time from the high of thinking the, from the low of 15th of March, project it to the high of 4th of April, project it to the 12th of May 2020 low. Will this give us a one time as well, right? So now, but however, if we start to see a four hour close below 20,470, then we may start to see a kind of a very choppy uh, movement, a drop to retest the 12th of May swing low area at 9,165. Now moving on next to the uh, another major stock indices that I'll share with you will be the Nikkei two to five. Okay, so for the Nikkei two to five over here, what we could see is still stuck within a very complex 
uh, range configuration that is in place since 8th of March 2022 low over here. Uh, currently, the, the it still managed to help above the swing low of 13th of May. Uh, previously, 20th of June, low did manage actually to surpass below this uh, uh, we call it a 12th of May low, swing low at uh, 25,535. So given a bit of a support range, uh, support level over this area in time. And last week, price action uh, is actually attempting to actually uh, come close to 25,535 uh, before uh, shipping a, we call it a, a recovery. And uh, right now, today's uh, price action uh, now attempting to do another test again at this 25,535. So if you go to the four hour chart, right? So what I could see on the four hour chart over here, uh, what we could see is, are we still using, okay, last week we were still bullish uh, above this 25,535 to play within this uh, complex range configuration. So uh, I'll be still using 25,535. So I'm now adding uh, another inter intermediate uh, resistance level at 26,530. So how this 26,530, 26,530 over here, you could see uh, last week it taken up pretty sharply. Uh, did a bounce up, retest at 26,530, come break above it and shape that, uh, uh, we call it a, a sell off again on uh, last Friday. And right now, price action also attempting to actually uh, ship another, uh, uh, we call it another drop. All right, so for sure, 25,535 will be my key medium term pivotal support. So I'm keeping this as my uh, level to maintain my bullish bias, but however, added an intermediate resistance at 26,530. So if we start to see a break above 26,530, we could see a further push up towards uh, this uh, range uh, configuration, uh, upper limit at 27,500 slash 26,760. Why 26,760 is actually this uh, descending trend line that's previously managed to keep previous rally in check since the high of 14th of September, 2021. But however, if we start to see a four hour close below 25,535, then we could see a further drop to retest the 8th of March swing low area at 24,500. Okay, now moving on to the uh, German uh, 40 index. So if you look at the German 40 index over here, what we could see that yes, last week it did a, uh, uh, another slide, another drop, dramatic slot drop to actually retest close to the 7th of March uh, swing low area at 12,430. But what we could see last week, it managed to actually form a positive uh, close on last Friday and ended last Friday with a bullish hammer configuration. All right, so which IE, what is mean over here is that uh, there are some signs of, uh, we call it a uh, momentum that is uh, coming back, upside momentum that is coming back on last Friday to give a bit of support right above this uh, 7 of March swing low area at 12,430. All right, so what we could see from here, uh, if you look at the RSI, so the RSI right, uh, seems to start to shape a bit of bullish divergence as well, but not as, uh, where we could start to see price start to shape a lower low, but your RSI has starts to shape a higher low. All right. Okay, lower low in price action, but RSI lower low starts to shape a higher low. So it came to us that uh, the couple of uh, last week downside momentum has started to ease off as well uh, by this bullish divergence since on the RSI. Okay, so uh, given these two positive configuration on the daily chart, this gives us a bit of confidence to actually uh, uh, to actually play a potential bounce off from this 12,500 slash 12,430. Uh, definitely that will be my key medium term pivotal support that I will have. Uh, so uh, that will be taken into reference of the 7th of March swing low area. So uh, definitely a break, uh, a further push up with a breakout above uh, 13,400 level uh, will give us a, a further reinforcement to actually see uh, another round of a corrective rebound leg uh, towards the next resistance level at 13,680 slash 13,900 in the first step. All right, so what we could see now is uh, potentially the German 40 index is undergoing a push up within this uh, sideway ring configuration uh, that potentially could take shape since the 7th of March 2020 low.
Okay, so previously the that the rebound actually also failed to surpass the 29th of March 2020 high. So giving a bit of a sideway range configuration uh, that is has starts to form uh, from a multi uh, month perspective on the German 40 index. But however, if we start the four hour close below 12,430, we may see a further drop towards the next uh, support level at 12,030, which uh, being uh, defined by a cluster of FIBO extension level, and as well as this uh, minor descending, uh, we call it channel, uh, 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 we call it a lower limit, uh, which is so confluence at 12,030 level. So uh, all in all, right, what we could see is that uh, there, are, there are still a couple of uh, positive elements that are still uh, residing or that are still intact for the major indices that I cover for you all from the US indices, the S&P 500, the NASDAQ 100, uh, that is as well as the German 40 index and as well as uh, German 40 index, uh, also for the Japan 225. So uh, keeping, uh, we call it alive, this uh, a corrective rebound phase. Uh, that we are still expecting on the major stock indices and uh, due to uh, we call it uh, some positive elements that has been cited on the Hong Kong uh, of, uh, 50 index we are actually turning uh, bullish to play a further extension of this uh, corrective rebound uh, on potentially on the Hong Kong 50 from a neutrality sense stance that we have last week so uh, that's all I have for uh, this week's latest weekly technical outlook and I see you again in my next video.